Hey guys, this is GB Wang. So this is the second video I'm going to show you with the 11, uh, 11 face hatch build. And so where did I come up with this idea? Well, the well the idea it actually came from a very standard Zerg opening, which is the 11 pool 18 hatchery. And the reason why this uh, this build is very popular is because by opening up with an 11 pool, you pretty much shut down every form of uh, harassment that Protoss can possibly do to you, including like walling off your ramp or Cannoning, um, like cannoning you, or um, you know, like blocking your your natural with a pylon. But I was thinking, you know, I can put my uh, natural or my hatchery in the uh, natural like everybody else does, but then it's like, why not use it offensively as well? Because, again, with Protoss, before their warp gate research comes up, they're incredibly weak unless they did something like a cannon rush or a two gate, which more often than not they don't do. And so... So that's where the idea came from. The other thing that's nice about putting the hatchery in their base is the only thing that keeps Protoss together in the early game versus Zerg is that one little zealot that they keep at the cranny of their ramp. And because that's really, that's like the only unit that they have, whereas with Zerg you can just, you know, send waves and waves of lings over. And so if you're able to bypass that problem, then, you know, like you pretty much have the game. And so, in this one, if you look at the Protoss player, he's going to be walling off in a very similar way that most Protoss players do, where they put the pylon, um, you know, where the pylon's uh, energy radius covers the ramp, and then they're going to put down a gateway and a cybernetics core. So, it's a little bit in contrast to the previous video, but this is pretty much what you should expect, and it'll show you how to get by it. So now the pools come up, and what I do here is, um, once I have... 12 drones, then you make three zerglings. I actually um, goofed up a little bit here, and you don't, you really don't want to do this because this is a very finicky build, but you want to get three lings, a queen, and then when you're at 17, 18 supply, what you want to do is throw down a uh, another overlord, because I don't want to get supply blocked when this build is really micro-intensive, and that way I can focus solely on the lings. As it's being spawned, you put the drone, um, you send the drone out, and then you put the hatchery right inside of their base. Sometimes if I can't get the hatchery in their base and I'm feeling especially all in, I'll just put the hatchery right at the base of the ramp as well and the creep spread will still help out. So, And you can get the, the quick reinforcements. So this time, there we go, the drone got sneaked in. I'm a little bit short on minerals, but now I have my lings here. So this is really bad. This is why you always want to attack with six lings and this is where I goofed up because I only have four lings and four lings is usually not enough to um uh, to take down one zealot unless your micro is like absolutely perfect so with these lings you always want to try to conserve them that's why i'm trying to run them in circles until i get reinforcements and um but this is really bad this is a situation where i can get kind of ugly where he's actually had where he has two zealots out and so i'm not really doing any damage right now and i'm going to be trying to trying to take down this uh this zealot with some uh ling micro and it's like i almost do it but not quite and so I'm actually, I'm in a lot of trouble here, but once you commit to this build, it's pretty much all in, so you gotta make this work. So with your queen, one of the hardest things to do with this build is just to balance out the, like, you attacking versus injecting, um, having your queen inject the larva, but you cannot miss these larva, because that's like, little mistakes like that can cost you the game. But here, you know, the hatchery's almost come up, the zealots are hacking away at it, and now, like, this guy's blocking the ramp. So one of the things is when you have a cybernetics core, and a gateway, the best structure to kill is the gateway because if you, um, the cybernetics core is harder to kill, but also if you kill the gateway, then you pretty much deny their ability to have an army most of the time. This guy's actually got his gates up. I actually had to cancel my hatchery too because the two zealots were on it, but I just needed some space so I can remake it. But now, you know, I have more lings over here. There, these uh, zealots are kind of, um, in that in that little cranny, and I shouldn't be engaging them over here, and I realize it a little bit late, but there we go, and then I start, um, I start soon, I'll start hacking away at the gateway as well. If you can take down the gateway, then you can pretty much get into the base, and if you look at this Protoss player, he's actually trying to get positioned um, in such a way where he can throw down another gateway when, when this thing goes down. But he messes up, and now it's too late. And so now I'm in his base. He actually went three gate Stargate, which isn't a bad idea because the Void Ray should, you know, destroy this. But now that I'm in his base, and the hatchery's going to come up pretty soon, he's actually in a lot of trouble. 
And now once you once you destroy their army, you know, you want to, like, I wanted to take down this pylon really badly so I can keep the Void Ray from coming up. But then, you know, like, once, if you can kill all of the probes, they're not going to get Void Rays up. And so he's kind of upset that this happened to him. But th it tends to happen to a lot of Protoss players because this is a, it's a build that they don't really expect. And it's, it's one of the key points uh, of this game, too, to keep in mind is because this is, I mean, if you're a Protoss player, how often do you actually see this build that used against you, right? It's it's really rare, and you don't really want to play people with, like, I don't enjoy playing against people with, like, very common builds that everybody has seen, and, um, you know, because the thing is, if you play, like, a very standard, you know, you you put a hatchery in your natural Protoss player, he's just going to be comfortable, he's going to do exactly what he normally does, like a 4-gate or 3-gate expand or, you know, something along those lines, but then he's in his comfort zone but if you use a build like this, where it's like he has to constantly think on his toes, you know, you're putting him in a, a spot that he's not very familiar with, and that increases your chances of winning. The other thing, too, is it's like, if you look at, um, at this build, it's such a lose-lose situation for him. Sometimes you'll see Protoss players pull their probes to attack the hatchery, which is fine because then they're losing, you know, a lot of mining time. And then it's like, if you have the hatchery right there, is the Zealot going to, you know, wall off or is he going to keep the hatchery from coming up? It's just, it's such a bad scenario. It's like almost anything the Protoss player can do can put him in a lose-lose situation. Now, the one thing I do want to warn you about, though, is sometimes if you see, if a Protoss player sees this opening, he might actually throw down a forge, get a zealot in in between the two structures, and then um, put a cannon right behind it. In that case, you have to cancel and you have to put down a hatchery in your natural. But by doing that, if you force a cannon in a forge, that's already 300 minerals down the drain and it'll buy you more time to, you know, like put up some spines and, um, and go mass muter or something along those lines as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for listening. And if you, um, if you liked it, please uh, hit the like button as well and uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be having a lot more stuff coming up in the days ahead as well. Thanks for listening.